Kovacevich. I'm a professor at Brigham Young University. I've been here uh, for about 17 and a half years. My training is in bioorganic and medicinal chemistry. Graduate research at the University of Wisconsin. That's where I received my PhD. I did postdoctoral research at The Ohio State University. My expertise is in uh, mimics of antimicrobial peptides and immunomodulating glycolipids. Our research is uh, and has been funded by the National Institutes of Health through met multiple grants through the National Science Foundation and through industrial partners as well. We collaborate with groups all through the U.S. and throughout uh, most countries in the world. So one of the challenges of any large organism or any human, any animal, is to live in an environment that is overrun with little tiny organisms called bacteria. Or even though we can't see them, there are far more bacteria around us than there are people or plants or trees or anything. If the growth of bacteria is allowed to proceed without anything stopping it, the numbers of bacteria that we have on us would completely wipe us out, would kill us in a few hours. So our bodies, animals' bodies, plants even, they have to have special protections that control bacterial growth, that either stop bacteria from growing or kill bacteria so that they don't overwhelm us. So the primary way, the, the way that, that animals and plants and we control bacteria is with a special set of molecules called antimicrobial peptides or AMPs. And AMPs selectively kill bacteria by uh, being attracted to the surface of bacteria and then flipping over and that that destroys or at least causes defects in the outside of the bacteria which causes them to die. So this is nature's way of protecting animals plants, humans. And we would like to be able to use those same protections that nature has developed in controlling bacterial growth when we have injuries, when we have infections. Because even though we have protections, each of us does, each of us has these AMPs, there's still a problem. When we get a cut, when we get injured, we can still get infection and bacteria start to grow quickly. And our body's responses to that are that we get, in, we get inflammation, that is the redness and swelling, pain. These are all responses to infection. In those cases, our natural defenses get overwhelmed by the bacteria. That is, the bacteria start growing too fast. And what we would like to be able to do is use nature's way these antimicrobial peptides or AMPs to control the bacterial growth. But there's a problem with using AMPs. If we use one of the AMPs that's found in humans and we try to make it in big amounts so that everybody could use it when they got infected or when they got hurt, it would cost a huge amount of money for even small amounts of the material. But being scientists we can look at the structure of these AMPs, understand how they work, and design molecules that have the same type of structure and do the same kind of thing, but instead they're made of molecules that are simpler, that are easier to make, that we can make in large amounts. So as we were studying how this, this known molecule attacks bacterial membranes, we, we were looking at structures that we might make in the laboratory that would have the same shape. This is one of those rare instances in any scientist's career where the first thing we tried worked. And I can still vividly remember getting a phone call late at night from one of my graduate students 
trying to explain to me that we had killed all of the bacteria. Now, we didn't expect these molecules to have good antimicrobial activities, but it turns out they did. And he thought he'd run the experiment poorly, called me to ask if I could figure out anything he had done wrong. We went through all of the procedures. He had done it right. And this was the first indication that the design that we had come upon worked the very first time. So this is what we've done. So we've made molecules that are mimics, that is, they do the same thing as AMPs. That is, that they selectively associate or grab on to the surfaces of bacteria and then flip over. This causes the bacteria to lose their protection and in, their, in their cell walls and their membranes and it causes them to die. It isn't an inhibitor like, like antibiotics. It's not the standard antibiotic. It has the same killing mechanism as your body and your system has. All animals, plants, insects have it. And it, it's a mimic of that that's on your skin, in your mouth, in your body. That's, that's one of the reasons that it's so safe. There's a lot of resistance now to all antibiotics. We know that there's, there's a resistance to a lot of the disinfectants we use. And, the, the bacteria now can mutate to where they protect themselves, they fortify themselves in what we call a biofilm, and it's a fortification of bacteria. We think that's a problem around water in animals. We think it's a problem where there's feed. Even in a dog trough where you see the slimy film, that's a biofilm. Even in the wounds, we develop biofilms. That's where the infection comes from and, and probably why the wound doesn't heal and we get it a lot of scar tissue there. Everything we use now in the world can kind of disrupt the outer layer, but it protects the inner layers, it's kind of like a fortress. The way this product kills, it's a physical kill where it actually drills through or disrupts the membranes all the way through the biofilm. We think in the environment, if we can slow down the bacterial load on these small young foals or calves or pigs or whatever the animal might be, to give that little immune system a little bit better shot, then we can avoid a lot of the sickness caused by these pathogens in the animal world. There's a lot of studies on toxicity. We're doing analyticals all the time on it. The, there's a lot of money being put behind it with the, the FDA and the Center of Disease Control, the DOD, Defense Department. A lot, of, a lot of agencies are studying this right now because they think this has a chance to be the next big breakthrough in medicine. In my opinion, um, Dr. Savage's development of, of this technology was revolutionary because it, it kills bacteria in a completely different um, uh, action than anything we've ever seen before, at least anything I've ever seen before. And from what we've seen, there's nothing out there like it other than what's in nature. It's the way nature kills bacteria, it's the way our bodies kill bacteria, and, and that's the way that I want to be able to, to solve the bacterial problems that we deal with here. Several years ago, I guess it's been three years ago now, I uh, had a real problem in this falling barn, and this is where we fall out all our babies. And early in the year, a um, couple of years ago, we had six babies had fold so far at this point in time, and they had all gotten a bacterial infection. We had uh, one that had really gotten sick, and we were doctoring it um, two or three times a day uh, and, and struggled with it for about 30 days. So at that time, we brought, them in, brought the product in here, and we disinfected these two stalls right here, the, the floors, the walls, the waters, the feeders, and everything. And immediately, those foals got well. And where the other foals were in these other stalls, we went and we disinfected those stalls. And within days, all of those six foals got well. We had another 20 foals that year and fold them out in these stalls and didn't have any, any more bacterial infection, no, no more problems at all. And so that was the first, my first experience with the PureFect technology. And that was really a game-changing event for us because we have so many foals um, that get sick, they're pushed back, we have difficulty in marketing those foals, and they're never right. And the fact that, that we were able to solve that problem since then, and it's been another two seasons since then, and we haven't doctored any babies and haven't had those same problems. So it was a big, big, uh, big thing for us. 
we're in the center of the thoroughbred world in, in Lexington, Kentucky, and, and Root and Riddle is, is one of the, two of the big practices in the area. And uh, been open since 1985, and we're, we're major players. We, we have the best surgeons in the world. We have our, our, our specialists are second to none. Um, we have the expertise and the knowledge here that is, that is unparalleled. Lance called me, and he asked about it, and I, I said, Lance, there's really, there's so many of these products that, that come across all the time, and um, it's, it's not that horsemen are gullible, but we're, we're, always, we're always looking for something, and there's, there's just, there's a lot of different treatments out there, and they, they come and they go, and you never know who to believe. It's just who's got, a lot of times, who's got the fanciest packaging and, and, and marketing, and so he said, well, look into this for me. And I, I read some of the research and showed it to one of our, our medicine people, and, and we both agreed that there was some real promise there. So I called him back and I said, you know, this one's a little bit different. We might want to we might want to look at it. It was meaningful to us that it had a lot of research done by a university and that, that people had dedicated a lot of time and research to the product to, before they brought it to us. Absolutely, any time that we can get away from, from overusing the antibiotics that we do have, um, with something that, that shows no resistance, absolutely. I think that's important, um, not just for us as veterinarians, but anybody in the, in the health world would be interested in that. One of the things that, we've, that we're, we're looking at is um, putting it on surgical implants, and we did some work with that last spring, and that's going to continue into this spring, and that, that showed some promise for us to keep them from getting infected, keeping the biofilm off of them. Um, we're, we're looking at doing some intrauterine therapies in, in the brood mares, and then we're continuing to look at, uh, of course, the, the, the skin lesions that we've been able to, the skin diseases that we've been able to treat with it. We're, we're looking further into that, too. Well, Rudin Riddle's very interested in, in th this type of product and, and alternative treatments to the, to the therapies that we've got that have been good for us, but that we would like to move away from using so many antibiotics. and. Um, it's it's better for everybody if we can if we can do that. There are very few new antibiotics being developed. The the people will say that the, the pipeline is empty, and there's great concern in, with in governments across the world that that we're going to end up with uh, uh, so many resistant bacteria that the state of healthcare will be back as we as it was in the uh, in the early 1900s. And so this, this new approach to controlling bacterial growth is, is quite exciting in that uh, it's meeting a need now that's, that's growing dramatically. My name is Gary Maxfield. Um, I grew up around team horses, uh, worked with teams when I was younger. Got into rodeo horses with my kids when they started uh, wanting to do rodeo. I've been training barrel horses, rope horses a little bit now for uh, probably 10 years. And I uh, here recently run into a problem with scratches. Um, had them for six months roughly, couldn't get rid of them. Tried every product that you could find. Every time somebody would suggest a product, I'd try it. Couldn't get rid of them. And I'd probably quit, but the pain you could see those horses going through when you put those bell boots on or run them, you just, you, you need to get rid of the scratches. It was suggested to me to try PuraShield, so I tried it. Um, you know, I needed to find something, and it was amazing. I was, I was really shocked with the results. Um, all the other products would tend to, sh to uh, hide it, or maybe it would go away a little bit, but it'd always come back. But once I'd used this product, it took about four weeks, and it cleared it up completely. Now, Another winter's come through. I'm, I've been watching them to see if it comes back. None of it's come back. I have no, no scratches on none of my horses. So it's impressive. Tried it on several other things. Anything that uh, a wound or, or something, that, some infestation of, of uh, a bacteria, a, a virus, a fungus. And amazingly, it'll, it'll clear it up and, and completely eradicate it. it. It was explained to me as I, as I did a little bit of research on the product because it works so well that this, is, this product works just like your body does. It's just nature's way. It actually does what the body does, but it, does, but it helps the body do it. So it's, it's the perfect way to treat your animals. So you're not putting a chemical in there that's foreign to the body. My name is Amberly Snyder, um, and I've been around horses since I was three years old. 
grown up with them and when I started barrel racing at seven I just got hooked on rodeo and have been doing it ever since so it's been over 20 years now so because of these successes that I had seen in the past personally I thought hey why not use this on other things we had a goat at my house for goat tying and it got this nasty fungus along his whole back and uh we didn't know if that could transfer to our dogs. So I have a dog and my brother has a dog. So I started spraying it on my dog because I didn't want it to get the fungus. Well, within about a week and a half, his dog started to get the fungus where mine didn't even get it at all. So we knew that it had prevented my dog from getting this fungus from the goats. Because I love it, I tell all my friends about it. And this lady that is actually the one that taught me how to burl race, she was asking me about the products and she said that her horse had scratches which is such a pain to get rid of and if you don't get rid of it then it can get worse and spread up your horse's entire leg so i said just try this on it and see what you think and within a couple days she calls back and she said kate it's almost gone and scratches usually takes a couple weeks to get rid of so for it to go that fast was incredible for me personally if anybody has anything i tell them we have something that's going to fix that I did have a friend that her horse caught its um, leg in a fence, completely scraped the skin off from the knee down to the fetlock. So his entire can of bone was just raw. And she was actually putting on scarlet oil for about a month on this, and it was seeing no change, was infected, was inflamed, this horse was lame and terrible. And she happened to ask me, what, what should I do with this animal? And I said, I have something that's going to work. So I got her the products and she started putting on it and within a month there was nothing wrong. The horse was completely sound, there was barely a scrape there, it barely scarred at all. And this has started as something that she thought was going to be the end of this horse. This horse was not going to come back and run barrels because of this huge wound that it had and nothing was fixing it. But, I mean miraculously of course, it worked and cleared out all the infections so that it was able to heal. What's so great about it is that it doesn't fight against your body. It works with your body to fight the infections. And I personally really like to see that because your body has so many other things to be fighting off that to have a product that works with it to fight off the bad things helps out every situation. My name is Carl Genberg. I'm a member of the Scientific Advisory Board for CSA Biotech. And I have been involved with the CSA technology going back to 2005. Currently, there's a world crisis in health. Uh, part of it is linked to uh, bacterial infections in animals that are part of the food chain. Processed chicken, meat, and, and so forth that uh, then gets eaten by consumers, and there is a causal link uh, between those bacteria and, and what affects uh, human health. Maybe people in my mom's generation uh, would remember the days before antibiotics were commonly available. Uh, antibiotics really only became commonly available during and after World War II, the first one being penicillin, which was regarded as a silver bullet. Uh, the impact of penicillin on world health, it's hard for us to really appreciate these days, but it was as though somebody had a cure for cancer. People who were otherwise dying now could be resuscitated and resume normal healthy lives. The problem with penicillin and most conventional antibiotics that have followed it is that these drugs are static, which means <clears throat> that they will inhibit the growth of the bacteria, but they won't kill it. They won't eradicate it. There are still bacteria that survive and multiply. So bacteria are growing. They're doubling every 20 minutes. They grow at an exponential rate. The conventional antibiotic slows down this growth to, to such a level that the body's own immune system can come back in and finish up the job. Even if you kill 99.99% of the bacteria, uh, when you're dealing with millions and millions of bacteria, you still have tens of thousands of bacteria that are hanging around that weren't killed by the first wave of the conventional antibiotic. The paradox of antibiotic use is, the more you use antibiotics, the less effective they become. Because we are teaching the bacteria how to become resistant. We're stressing them, it's like an exercise program for bacteria. They're becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And now we're at a point where there are strains that are developed that no antibiotics work against at all. Uh, and rather frighteningly, the head of the World Health Organization about four or five months ago gave a speech. And she basically said, 
uh, we are entering the post-antibiotic era because our cupboard of antibiotics is running bare and the bacteria are mutating in such a way that they're becoming stronger and stronger. We're in a desperate situation. We have very few remedies to address these multi-drug resistant strains of bacteria and uh, these comp compounds, the CSA technology offers tremendous uh, promise uh, for being a, a way out of the dilemma that we are currently in. What's the difference with the CSA technology? CSAs eradicate. They're lethal. They're cidal. There are no survivors. So there's no chance for a second generation to develop mutated forms that are now resistant to CSA. Nature has evolved these types of compounds over millions and millions of years and has come up with a mechanism of action that has proven to be extremely effective and durable. We're attacking the bacterial membrane, depolarizing it, I and E flux, the inner guts of the bacteria spill out and the bacteria dies. We are able to use this technology uh, to address multi-drug resistant strains that are not addressable by uh, what we currently have. Uh, there are now over 30 scientific poster presentations, over 30 peer-reviewed journal articles on the technology. These are publications that are submitted to a team of scientists whose reputations are on the line that make sure that things are published that are of the highest caliber. So this is very well documented in the scientific field as uh, having a great validity and, and, and solid science behind it. Uh, this is a cidal or lethal uh, approach. We don't leave bacteria hanging around after the first wave of the assault, they're all gone. Uh, and because they're all gone, there's no, the risk of mutational at, uh, development of, of mutant strains by replication and progeny because these things are growing by the millions and they replicate, they double every 20 minutes in, in their populations. Uh, we're able to eradicate them and if you eradicate them, as one of my friends said, the only good bacteria is a dead bacteria. Over the subsequent years we've made literally hundreds of these molecules making modifications to various parts of the molecule to better understand what the optimal structure is and to also understand how the compounds work. So we now have a collection of molecules that, that are very active antimicrobials that are mimicking this attack shape and this attack shape is the same shape that we find in antimicrobial peptides. This has been years of work in my laboratory that is collaborative with laboratories all over around in the U.S. and in, in countries all over, uh, ranging from Brazil to Japan to Belgium to France. We've worked with groups in, in many different countries, and so now it's dozens of labs that we've published with they've verified the results, so they've compared the mechanisms of action of these of these mimics that we've made, the CSAs, they've compared how they kill bacteria to antimicrobial peptides, and in every instance we see that they have the same mechanism of action. They selectively target bacterial membranes, they cause permeabilization of the membranes, and transient pores which cause the bacteria to, to die. My name is Jason reynolds -Bacher. Um This is my son's horse, Rocky. Um, we had an incident with him where a T-pulse went through his front shoulder here, um, which was a really, really bad wound. Um, it was almost the size of my fist. The wound was right here, right underneath his shoulder, and it was right where his leg and his shoulder hit. So, like I said, it was a horrible spot uh, where he moves on it every day, and it, it was hard to keep a bandage there. And uh, um, Dr. Benjamin Darian uh, was here in town, so I actually had him look at it, and there was nothing to really stitch it to. It was a, it was an open gash, so there you couldn't really. It was a place where you couldn't stitch. You couldn't really put any uh, um, bandages on it, so uh, we kept it clean. Um, and uh, I was handed a bottle of the Pure Shield, and I used it three times a day. What was very impressive was the second week into it, um, it was incredible what was happening with the wound. It was healing very quickly. Um, I didn't have to clean it as much. 
um, it, and it, you could tell a lot of the inflammation was starting to go down, the fluid was starting to drain. There's absolutely no scar tissue, no proud flesh, nothing. Uh, you would never know that the wound was there. Any other vet would have said it would have taken six to eight weeks to, to heal. Uh, I could have been on his back at day 14. After having success with the Pure Shield on our other horse that got a, a wound, um, this is my daughter's goat horse. We came home on a Saturday night um, from a rodeo, and Sunday morning he had a case of strangles when we came out and fed that morning. And as we all know, strangles will come out at a couple different spots. This one happened to come out underneath his, um, underneath his chin here, and it was the size of probably a softball and it actually had broke the, uh, and it started um, pussing. And um, as we all know how bad strangles are, it's a, it's, it's a, it can spread very quickly to other horses so we can find him to his own pen, uh, his own water obviously, um, where he was away from the other horses. We started using the pure shield on him three times a day, sometimes even four times a day. Um, on day seven, that was completely closed, the, the strangles, um, the open area was completely closed. On day 14, there was hair growing back um, right underneath his chin. All the infection completely 100% gone. I'm a veterinarian, Dr. Jerry Bailey. I uh, <clears throat> got out of veterinary school in the late 60s and immediately went to the racetrack in Florida with a group of veterinarians and uh, practiced on the racetrack for a number of years left and went to Oklahoma and began a practice uh, that had to do with mares and a mixed practice. And it wasn't long after that I became involved uh, pretty heavily in the thoroughbred industry, buying and selling thoroughbreds and breaking and training. Some of the horses that we've trained and developed have gone on to be uh, good horses. We uh, raised <coughs> and sold Looking at Lucky that was champion two-year-old and three-year-old here a few years ago. We bought, trained, and sold uh, Thunder Gulfs that won the Kentucky Derby. And uh, a horse called Henny Hughes not long ago standing at Stallion. We, uh, we raised a horse called Cowtown Cat that ran in the Derby that just had his first two-year-olds uh, go to the track last year quite successfully. So we've been fortunate that we've been around uh, some horses that have been quite successful in the business. Uh, I was introduced to Purist Shield by my friend Lance Robinson. It's a totally new concept. We've not seen this in a product that, that I'm familiar with. And uh, uh, the, way, the way it mimics AMP and the way it was developed uh, it just was, was phenomenal. As I <clears throat> looked at the science that was available, and started using some, some of the product personally on my horses, uh, I began to see that this might be a once in a lifetime product. I, didn't, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it come along in my lifetime. And uh, you, you've gotta be very sold after you look at the science and see what it's doing. We're all totally concerned with these superbugs these days, and that's a big, big problem. Everyone is reluctant to prescribe antibiotics, and here's a product that, in, in my opinion, has done more so far, still things to prove, it done more so far uh, than most of the high-powered antibiotics can do. So I've used it in a few simple instances where I've had, I think, fantastic results. As my blacksmith was at my farm one day, uh, he was telling me of the terrible problems they have with white Lyme disease, which being a veterinarian, I know it's a big problem and it's an infectious process and it'll go from horse to horse in a stable and it's a bacterial infection. And uh, he doing a lot of show horses had a lot of problem with it. And I gave him some of the product to, to use on some of the horses and he was astounded came back and uh, wanted more and more product, uh, sent it to more and more blacksmiths, and, and th this was one of the first things I saw. And we used it <clears throat> on our farm on wound healing and were just in awe. I, uh, I had a wound that uh, a horse was sent to me. He had 
he had uh, punctured his guttural pouch area from the outside with, uh, with a steel post and actually had gone right into the salivary gland. And we healed that thing up. It was four or five inches deep. We healed it up in a matter of about 18 or 20 days, and I just thought that was phenomenal. Uh, other wound applications, particularly burns, and things like this that are sometimes hard to heal, uh, we had great results with. Another application uh, was with skin disease, which can be quite resistant sometimes, all the different fungal and interrelated bacterial infections that are with it. So we had some success there. Using this product in place of some of the standard treatments now, uh, I'm particularly impressed of the non-toxic effect of it. I have not found an area where the toxicity has been uh, a problem. I've seen people use it in eyes, uh, as a spray in eyes and with great results. Uh, I have looked at the studies on toxicity levels and just haven't found any. Uh, it's, it's biodegradable in the environment and uh, I think that's a total big uh, de deal that the toxicity has stayed as low as it has. One of the other applications was we had some yearlings for sale and I've, we've over the years sold maybe 100, 125 yearlings a year. One of the big problems with yearlings is pharyngitis on your way to the sale and a horse with pharyngitis and he's gonna be stressed and shipped. Uh, he's not gonna scope to his best advantage, which you need him to do to sell. Uh, I put it in a throat wash and probably cleared up more pharyngitis quickly than I ever had with the antibiotics, the steroids, and the things that are conventionally treated with. So I've had a lot of luck in uh, the number of cases that I've used it on and treated it on. And as I say, when you look at the science, you've got to believe that it's got big possibilities. I see applications uh, <coughs> just you know, widespread for, for uh, disinfectants around animal facilities, for, for mastitis, for all kinds of things you, you read about. Uh, it's some experimentation that's done with, uh, with uh, poultry, uh, shelf life of poultry hang of carcasses, and it's uh, results have been phenomenal. And so many products come and go, uh, they'll, they'll be on the market and uh, a number of veterinarians will use them, we'll use them ourselves and, and yeah, they, they work pretty well and pretty soon you're on another one and on another one, but the, the response I've had with the <coughs> product uh, from BYU has been phenomenal. You know, the less manpower you spend trying to <coughs> uh, nurse a wound along, uh, obviously the better off you are if you have a product that can do that quicker. We, we found that it, the wound healing time has been dramatically uh, decreased. It's the biggest thing that I've seen come along. My name is Mike Wahlberger, veterinarian here at Rocky Mountain Large Animal Clinic. I've been here 13 years. I was a year at uh, Idaho to small animal practice for a little while. And uh, so it's been, it's been an interesting product to use. I've enjoyed having the ability to, to have something to put into wounds, flush uteruses, and uh, and joints with and so it, it's been it's been a good product for us to use that way the places that we've that i found that that it works real well is is in wound lavage uh, adding the salute adding the medicine to a solution bag of of saline and to really clean wounds especially deep muscle wounds puncture wounds things that we have a terrible time getting cleaned out uh, and also joint lavage sometimes on some of these horses we only get one opportunity to put medicine in the joint. It's, it's nice to have a little confidence that there's a antibacterial product that we can put into the joint along with a specific antibiotic that they'll kind of hang around longer than, than just uh, in and out lavage. Uh, we've used it in eye nucleations, uh, different places like that, that, that then more of a contaminant thing uh, from the environment that we can kind of help decrease the pathogen load and then use just specific antibiotics for a you know, proper period of time and not have to extend the, the use of the antibiotics. The mare we had that came in, uh, she'd been barren for a couple of years and we 
cultured the uterus and found environmental contaminants and, and other bacterial species that weren't uh, conducive to her getting pregnant. Uh, in the lavage, we used uh, the Pure Shield, and uh, you know we got lucky, and and it cleared the infection, and and uh, the subsequent culture was clean, and she got pregnant. So we thought that was a pretty good success uh, in in using that. Where a lot of times we have to flush them two or three times, and it and it takes us a season to get you know a uterus that's cleared out. We've used it in pink eye a, a, a little. Uh, and it, you know, we've squirted it in there, and and it's been a great topical and something that the owners can do, versus subconjunctival injections and that that get kind of tricky. And if the animal's fractious and has a hard time, not just seasonal type things, but but then when they come off the pastures and go into feedlots, they get some environmental contamination and things that that scrapes their eye and gets an infection. And uh, we've used that to help control those situations as well. Other places where it works good is in, in wounds uh, over the point of the hawk and different places where it doesn't have a great blood supply. So you're given antibiotics systemically, but some of those regions don't have a great blood supply. And so delivery of that product uh, to those wounds is sometimes limited. And so having a product that we can lavage directly into the wound and, you know, and topically apply that thing periodically on a day-to-day -day basis and that, that adds just a little more comfort or at least lets you know that you've done everything you can to, to try and eliminate the infection in the, in the wound. The regulations that are ruling us and what we can do with antibiotics are become stringent and more strict and this allows us to be able to use in places where we just throw antibiotics at it and, and just, yep, here's a shot, here's fix this. This gives us an opportunity to, to clean the environment, to to, to decrease the pathogen load to where we can pinpoint use our antibiotics in a way that then would be a, I mean, more beneficial. Having it around and, and using it in different places, I've not seen any adverse reactions to it. I got it on my skin, got it on different places and not worried. Splash it around a lot when we're trying to lavage wounds out and it, I've not seen any problem with it at all. I wouldn't have any reservations using this at all. I, I highly recommend it. We've had good luck with it. I was a little apprehensive in some of the places that I put the put the medicine, but uh, I had such success with it uh, in a joint, septic joints, uh, uteruses work good, but places that you know you get one shot at doing it and and relatively good success with with one time application of the product. I'm Clint Robinson. I'm a four time national finals qualifier in the tie down roping. I'm from Spanish Fork, Utah. Um, I grew up around horses. It's been a big part of my family's life, and uh, they're real important to us. And uh, anything I can do to keep my horses healthy and going down the road is a big deal to me. And uh, the Pure Shield has been great for all my horses. And uh, a couple months ago, right before the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas, uh, the horse I was going to take to Vegas, um, he had an accident out back where a clown car kind of ran over him and pinned him into a fence, and he got hung up and got him cut up real bad in the hind end, his back legs, and. Uh, in the past, with the kind of injuries he had, I mean, in my opinion, I was a little scared I wasn't going to be able to use him in Las Vegas, you know, coming up a month and a half later. And uh, we did some doctoring, and we used the Pure Shield on him for about a month. And uh, I showed up in the NFR, and you could hardly even tell he had any cuts on him. And it was, I was, I was thankful. Well, once I got the NFR on him, you know, everything was good. And uh, I ended up having probably the best finals I've had, 175,000, ended up fourth in the year. And it was a great year. One of the other products I've used is the Uterine Lavage. And uh, I had a mare that I tied the world record on, 6.5. Uh, when I got done rodeoing on her, she kind of got crippled up, and I kind of had a little trouble getting her in full. I wanted to get some babies out of her because she was a great mare for me, and uh, we used that on her, and I was able to get about seven babies out of her. And so that'll probably be the probably be the future of my rodeo career. So you know, throughout the rodeo year, I travel anywhere all over the United States and all all the way up in Canada, and it's all over for about seven months. It's hectic and. When, you, when I don't have a, like my personal vet on hand with all the injuries and the sickness and everything that goes on out on the road with certain horses, you know, it's good to know that I've got, I've got a product and products out there that keep everything going and I don't have to have a vet all, there, all the time. And, uh, you know, it's anybody else that has animals throughout the world. You know, we know these products work and they've kept horses going on the road and that's what I do for a living. My horses have to be in my trailer all the time, six months out of the year, and it's hard on them, their immune system, everything. You know, and, uh, 
it's just good to know that I got all these products in hand that make my life a little easier. It's been proven in the in this scientific field. It's been proven in the clinic. It's a revolutionary product. It can do things that nothing else can do. We're in a revolution right now. They're trying to take antibiotics away from us. They're trying to take iodine away from us. This can replace both of those things. There's, there's been no resistance to it so far in all the studies that we've done. All the other antibiotics that are out there, resistance comes in six or seven generations now. This has 30 generations of testing with no resistance. We don't think there will be a resistance developed because it's a mimic to what's on your skin and in your body as long as humans, animals, and plants have been on earth. This is a mimic to what is controlled bacteria for plants, animals, and the human race here on earth. We found it to be effective in everywhere we've tried it so far, in the eyes, in the mouth, in the throat, on the body, in a mare's uterus, everywhere we've been with it, we've had remarkable results. It truly is one of the, the most beneficial molecules to come. I really, I really believe the people that develop this will they'll receive a Nobel Prize for it someday. It'll change the way we do things in the animal world. It's changed the way I do things. It's changed generations of animal husbandry in our family, the way we, the way we do things with our animals now. There's a lot less stress because we have a lot less sickness. In, in our fields of use in the horse business, a sick horse never amounts to a great horse. And we're, we're literally looking for the gold medal winners. Personally, to be able to work with compounds that we've designed in a laboratory that do what we've designed them to do, that actively kill bacteria, but then to see what they do in animals and in humans, and to see that they're, that they're potentially changing lives and even changing industries, is very exciting to me and, and I often am just thrilled with the idea that we've been involved in making some of these discoveries. We've been able to take a page out of nature's book and work as well if not better than uh, nature's own remedy for this problem. And whenever you can walk in nature's footsteps you're likely to get to the right destination. You know, we're very interested in, in exploring these products. It's, it's, it's new science, and we want to be at the forefront of, of looking at, new, at the new products that we do. A local vet here told me a, a case of strangles is usually six to eight weeks um, before it's all gone, and, and uh, this was hair growing back on day 14. Pretty impressive. I, I, I would recommend this to veterinarians, and I think any veterinarian that tries this product or any animal caretaker that tries this product, I think is going to be impressed with their results and is going to uh, want to use more of the product. Uh, everyone I've given product to, and every time I've tried the product, uh, it's been a favorable situation. It's been an impressive product, and I really have, have felt like it's a great product. We use it quite extensively. We offer it to clients, we sell it across the counter. Uh, it goes into our, our wounds. We've got good applications for it. We appreciate that the you know, the clients are now starting to come to us wanting the, wanting the product. I have a tiny little bottle of the Pure Shield in my car at all times and in my purse because you never know when you're going to be in a place and you're going to need it or somebody else you know is going to have this situation and you're just you're going to want to give it to them. So I keep it with me all the time because realistically you never know when you're going to need it.